I often tell people today that whatever you are today is a result of whatever you have been thinking, whatever you have been meditating about, and what you have been speaking from your mouth has created for you who you are today. Amen. Amen. And that will never change until we begin to have a renewed mind and a renewed understanding. And we must realize that those two seeds are both within us. And whatever life, whatever seed that you begin, that you focus on, and you meditate on, and you speak about, that is the identity that will flourish and grow in your field. Yes. Yes. And that will never change until there's light and revelation that comes to us from the heart of God to reveal to us the truth of our being. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And when you discover that within your consciousness, within your being, you have everything in the seed of God that you would ever need to be an exact replica of God on this earth. Amen. 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 And I found it was very, very... I, I used to wonder why the scripture said we had to be reborn or regenerated. Yes. Well, it's because when we came into this realm, we went into a sleep, a death state, so we need, our spirits need to be regenerated. It's a marvelous thing. And so many people get cheated because they, they, they're told, come up to an altar and, and repent and confess your sins and you'll be born again. And it's a wonderful thing. I did that myself. <laughs> but I never came to an altar, but, you know, I did the, the repentance and, the, and, and, you know, the things that you're supposed to do. But we're still so lost mm. in this mistaken identity. Mm. Peter says, being born again, not a corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the living and abiding Word of God. You'll never make a more valuable discovery than to discover Christ within you. Yes. I spent many years in the religious world. I was raised on a, a Lutheran church bench. And when I was about 29 years old, I, I really met, experienced the Lord in reality. And uh, I, I went into Pentecost. And, and I've been into so many different religious groups and organizations. Always, my heart was always to find the people who really wanted to serve God. <laughs> and I always found two or three in each group. You know, that, that they're the ones that do the financing and keep the gears rolling and, you know, clean the church. And there's a few who do all those things. Mm -hmm. Come on. But, but we're all, in that system, we're all so lost in, to our true nature and identity that we get into this performance thing. Come on now. You know, we, we, we feel we want to please God so desperately. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we get into this performance thing and we totally miss the truth of our being. Yes. And religious thinking keeps you in bondage to death. <clears throat> Think of it, if, 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 we, if, if, if the people of God on the earth today, no matter where they are, once their eyes are unveiled to the truth of Christ within them, what happens to them, I can guarantee you, the very first thing that happens to you when your eyes are open to the reality of Christ in you is you get out of that religious mindset. Yeah. 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 And you begin to discover the truth of the unconditional, unfathomable love of God for His creation. And you begin to understand what I call the magnitude of Calvary's victory. Yes. Uh, I love what Jesus said. He said, 
if I be lifted up, and he wasn't talking about, you know, just getting together and praising and lifting his name. He was talking about the cross. Amen. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw how many men to myself? Oh. And I love that word draw in the Strong's because if you look it up, here's literally what Jesus said. If I be lifted up on the cross, uh -huh. through my death and resurrection, I will drag yes. all men. <laughs> You see, the good news about the gospel is, brother, you do not have a choice. Come on. That's right. Come on now. <laughs> now, I, I should rephrase that and say you do have a choice, Well, you really don't. <laughs> uh, that's right. You didn't think you do. Come on now. <laughs> because the scriptures tell me that God works all things after the counsel of His own will. Amen. That's right. And if he works everything after the counsel of his will, and he, as we learned this weekend, he has chosen you before the foundation of the world, that you would stand before him holy and unbelievable and unreprovable in his sight, if that is his will, try all you want to. <laughs> Run away all you want to. Cry all you want to. But you see, I begin to have an understanding of the Father's heart. And I have literally stood in the very presence in the throne of God and had revealed to me His heart for His creation. There isn't a critical eye, there isn't a critical word that comes from the heart of the Father. You see, we were so scared of judgment as Christians being in the typical Christian mindset, we were so fearful and we were taught of a fearful judgment. Yet, when, when from the pulpits across America you begin to tell people that God is going to judge them for their disobedience, judge them for their rebellion, judge them for their sin, you absolutely do not know or understand Calvary. Mm -hmm. And I know how that sounds, if you've never heard it. But you see, the very act of Calvary, what I call the magnitude of Calvary's victory, says that God took everything of the negative and laid it on Jesus. You know, religion will tell you, almost any church in America will tell you, that he, the just, suffered for the unjust. Any church in America will tell you the judgment that you deserved was laid on Him. And God judged all of creation at the cross and declared them not guilty. Amen. Now that's what the Amen. Christian church teaches. Come on now. But on the other hand, they say, but... You see, whenever you word somebody wants this up to me, whenever you use the word but, you negate everything you just said. Yeah. 